Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's take a look at the Earth's heat sources. Heat sources is what drives the planet into either being geologically active or being geologically inactive. We can go, for example, to the moon and notice that some of the surface of the moon probably hasn't changed for billions of years. It is covered with craters that have accumulated over the millennia. But when we look at the Earth, and of course it's not a good picture of the Earth, I'll grab my globe here. When we look at the Earth, there's very few places where you can actually still see remnants of the enormous amount of impact that the Earth has received over the billions of years. Craters are very rare on the Earth, and that's because the Earth is very geologically active. Now, what drives that activity? Again, the answer is energy. Where does the energy come from? Well, there are three main sources. One of the sources is, of course, the sun. The sun deposits sunlight on the Earth on a constant basis. The, the sun's surface temperature at about 5,800 Kelvin drives enormous amount of heat towards the Earth, heating up the, the atmospheres and the oceans. And because of that, we have what we call surface processes, such as the weather, the ocean currents, and an enormous amount of erosion because of the hydrological cycle. It's always the water in the oceans is evaporating, the clouds then deposit that in the form of rain over the land masses, and then the rivers and the erosion caused by the water flowing down back to the ocean causes the landscape to change on a constant basis. Mountains that may have been very high and, and very sharp in their peaks millions of years ago or hundreds of millions of years ago through that erosion have been worn down to just these rounded hills many years later. Two other big sources of, of heat for the Earth is the tidal forces and the radioactive decay inside the Earth. Let's talk about the tidal forces. Both the Moon and the Sun cause a lot of gravitational forces to be acting upon the world, on the Earth. And because the Earth is rotating, the surface or the portion of the Earth that's being pulled towards the Sun and being pulled to, towards the Moon is constantly changing. As the Earth is rotating, the Earth is constantly being stretched and squeezed and stretched and squeezed, causing enormous amount of friction forces to exist inside the Earth. It also causes the, the oceans to rise and fall and rise and fall along all the coastlines, causing erosion along those as well. And of course, the waves coming crashing in, which is also part of the surface processing caused by the heating of the sun. But the tidal forces do add a lot of energy to the interior of the Earth, keeping the Earth uh, in a molten state. The mantle of the Earth, even though it, it is somewhat solid, and the lithosphere and asthenosphere just below it, uh, especially the asthenosphere is kind of in a molten liquid state and then towards the center of the Earth, the core of the Earth has a large liquid portion in it as well. And because there's so much, uh, ability, there's so much heat within the interior of the Earth that causes portions of the mantle, portions of the lithosphere, the asthenosphere to be kind of in a molten liquid state, it causes the crust portions of the Earth at the surface to be broken into pieces and be able to move around. So all this additional heat causes geological processes such as earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, continental drift, and mountain building. Not only does the tidal forces contribute to that, but in a large part the radioactive decay. There's many, many elements within the Earth's crust that are radioactive in nature, probably also towards the interior and the core. And this constant decay, causing all that heat to be generated through that decay process, adds enormous amount of heat to the Earth in such a way that the core of the Earth is still at 5,700 Kelvin, almost the same temperature as the surface of the Sun. Now, because of the enormous pressures toward the center, of course, that is not in a liquid or in a, a gaseous state, the enormous pressure at the center causes the actual core of the Earth to be in a solid state. And so, therefore, even though the temperature would tell you otherwise, the, you can see that the center of the Earth is still in a solid state because of the pressure. But nevertheless, the radioactive decay and the tidal forces combined cause the Earth to be geologically a very active place compared to some of the other planets such as Mercury and, uh, and um, Mars. They are not geologically very active because they're much smaller and the interior probably has cooled down to the point where they can no longer sustain those geological processes. Many of the smaller moons are the same way. They are no longer geologically active because they're too small and the, the interiors have cooled down to the point where they cannot sustain geological processes. But if you go to the Earth, earthquakes are happening all over the world on a constant basis. Volcanic eruptions are taking place 
many times during the, during the year. Continental drift is an ongoing process where parts of the crust are moving across the globe over time. It may just be a few centimeters per year, but over the millions of years, there's a lot of movement of these continents. And mountain buildings, such as the Himalaya Mountains and the mountains in Italy, are still being pushed up through the geological processes, where in other places, like in Scotland and England, mountains are being worn down through the do the erosion process and this continual mountain building and erosion is what's changing the landscape and the geological surface of the earth on a constant basis. So as a planet, the earth is a very active place. We can go to other places in the solar system, but that's not all the case. And so we now understand what sets into motion the geological processes of the earth and we can then compare those processes to places when we visit them in the rest of the solar system. So, that's why it's so important to understand where those sources of heat come from and how they affect the way the planet and the moon operates in a geological sense.